Day 2 is going to be released later in the year as part of our um, insights and analytics, utilizing the AI capabilities that we're going to roll out with you know, the data lake as well as what we call the savvy copilot so that you have an ability to do uh, chat interaction with the platform. Um, here, this is more of a security analyst dashboard, so somebody that is focusing on identity security, um, seeing how the platform can streamline that, not only you know, identifying things that he can do as far as excessive permission accounts, uh, entitlements that are without owners, or even things that AI can recommend as far as you know entitlement descriptions and ownership and things like that. It's broken down that way so that you can see. You see, sadly, if you I'll start chatting with it in a second at the top if you want to interact as well as the recommendations that Savvy has identified with the data, right? So this, the first iteration that we're going to release is gonna be with our own data lake. So all your own data, of course, right? Um, and then Savvy and the AI is gonna be able to analyze all the data and make those recommendations, the first part. And then the identity insights here around identity security. And then the last piece, and I'm explaining the pieces before we walk through is around anonymous access, right? So access as far as how people are using or not using, how are they getting that access, and then the other tabs as far as certifications, how are um, your user population performing the certifications, how, you know, how we're trying to limit rubber stamping, if they're using recommendations when they're making decisions and things of that nature. So, so the unused access part, that's, that's feeding based on data in your data lake. So what, what, what do you need to feed into the data lake? Yeah, it's a great question. So for us to be able to identify and use access or even uh, permissions, right, we're always dependent on the endpoint application. So, you know, if we think about an AWS, we can connect with the access analyzer, and then access analyzer will feed the data for connecting with Active Directory would be less log on date. Right, so it depends how the so endpoint. It's not like ingesting sim logs, it's just. No, connect it's directly to the applications. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the, the application has to support. Correct. That is. Yeah, if the application um, doesn't correlate or doesn't keep track of that information, then we there's not much we would be able to do. Do, do you all have the capability to connect to databases for last login? Is that kind of built in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, we have database connectors supporting you know, most of the standard databases, you know, SQL, Oracle databases. So we'll be able to do all of those. So um, as far as the recommendation, so as a, as a secure analyst, right, when I'm looking at this, I'm seeing 11 accounts that have excessive permissions on it. I'm able to click here and see the trend, right, so that over time I'm able to utilize this and reduce the number of privilege over permission accounts uh, on the platform. You can see now, right? So that's 11. And then I can also start to be proactive and take, and take action. So I double click. My mouse is acting up, so it's a double click. Review. So if I do the review, I can you know, go into a user access certification and start doing the review of those accounts. If I go back and look at the other one, for the clipping, then we'll go into the actual report. So the same ones that you guys are familiar with from Control Center being able to then, you know, take the action if we're doing deprovision the access or disable the account, whatever actions we configure as far as the clipping of the, the access in there. So that's uh, one of them. Over here, as far as when we're looking at the, the overall risk detection, this will expand if I don't double click. And then we can start to build that overall analysis and looking at different things such as the actual application, configuration itself, workloads, or the identity. So, for example, if I look at a Salesforce and click over here, looking at the actual accounts in Salesforce, so these are the users, the identities. If I expand it here in Phoenix, for example, Phoenix has that account, why is it a risk, right? And we can see that it maps to those risk signals at the top, whether it be an SOD, a peer access outlier, out of band access, or even a dormant account that, you know, to the point earlier, if the application has um, identified last logon date, for example, hasn't happened in six months, we're going to flag it as a dormant account and then we can make a decision whether or not 
do we contact the user? Do we disable the account? Because, you know, odds are if they haven't used it in six months, maybe they don't need it. I mean, then they can request it again if they do need it, right? But we can map that as far as the risk goes here. This is uh, over permission. You see the account has system administrator as well as a member of the, the admin group itself. So, you know, we present a high risk unless they need it. You can probably do more of a time bound access on that over privilege versus having it permanently assigned to the account. Are you reviewing that there? Or could you assign it to somebody to say, hey, you need to look at this from this screen? Um, so we'll, yeah, from this one, I don't know yeah, uh, what type of capabilities we would include on this one when we do release it. I think that if we identify here, I don't see why we wouldn't identify on the other one that we saw the 11 accounts with the recommendation of SAPI and then that one, we can start a certification from there or even assign it to a team to review it as well. Yeah. The last one on, I want to look at it as far as the workforce identities. So we see the users that we have identified and if I click on one like uh, Phoenix again, you see all of the accounts that they have and why they are being classified as risky, right? So on the asset, for example, if I click on the um, AWS account over here, we'll see that it has access uh, to the administrator role and that gives you the admin rights to this um, Yes, bucket, right? The uh, S3 bucket over there. So, does he need it? Maybe we'll do a review, maybe we'll contact the user, maybe we're trying to do least privilege versus, you know, full admin rights in there. But that's from that security analyst perspective, trying to guide them and make, you know, so versus having to go hunt through maybe a SIM log or, you know, that don't know all the information. Uh, so, that's one of these workflows here. Now, for example, if I want to interact with Savvy uh, from, a, from a check capability, right? So I can start typing over there. And then we'll see once I click enter over here. Now, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you're very fast. That's right. 6,000 uh, words per second. <laughs> Um, so we'll see here that we've asked uh, Savvy about the Azure ID owner and we're also friendly reminded that it's no longer Azure ID, it's Enter ID. Um, and I can say, okay, give me uh, in the past six months. So now it's going to start building that, that report for me versus me having to manually build the report and analyze the data, right? And then I can, con I like that. So I'll give it a thumbs up. So the chat knows I'm happy with it. Are the service principal names inside of saving tied back to the owner now? Are you able to do that? Yes, because the way that we work, right, so we would just import it as an entitlement. Mm -hmm. so, oh, so you're grabbing the owner from Entra, which no, no, so I don't even know if in Entra you can assign an owner to a service principal. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be able to give you that uh, that option. You can give it to you. You can do it on the uh, Secrets though, right? oh, okay. and that's one of the issues you have. The owner of the may not be who you want to put in the savings section. We can override it. Yeah, we can. And we, can later, right? and we we wouldn't have a dependency, right? Because it can just be we are ingesting the service principle and the owner for us. It doesn't need to. We don't need to write it back to enter right. ID. So then we'll do the governance on our side with the ownership that we want for the review and certification. And then if we do need to deprovision, we can write it back and deprovision the service principle, but we don't need to write it back on overwrite, so create any confusion to what you might already have for ownership.